Hey everybody, what's up? Today I've got my fishing rod in my hand, I'm all packed up and I'm ready to leave and go fishing with you. I hope you are packed up too because today we are going to leave the uh, North American coast and we're going to cast our line in the rough waters of the Flemish Cup and try to catch some good swordfish. Today we are going to take a look here at this uh, board game, uh, the game called Swordfish. This is a board game for 2-6 to six players that uh, first came out in 2012 by a game company called Ganos Games. The author of this game is an Italian game designer named Pierluigi Frumusa. I've already reviewed the game from him, uh, so now here I'm going to pop a link uh, on screen somewhere that you can click on to look at that game. And I've also played another game uh, which I've already reviewed on my channel that plays very similarly to this game. Uh, these two games have uh, very distinct themes, completely different themes, but the play mechanics are very similar and they play so similarly that I like to uh, look at them as two brothers, really. I'm going to make plenty of comparisons in the final thoughts of this video. Now, what's most important is that together we are going to embark on a unique fishing experience. We are going to cast our line and try to catch some good swordfish. So let's all become sailors for a day and let's play together a game of swordfish. Welcome to the Atlantic Ocean. In this game, we are going to set sail and explore the ocean and try to catch as much swordfish as we can. But before we get this game started, let me recap real quick the steps that I've taken to set up the game first. First of all, I have placed the board right in the center of my table. Right next to the board, I have placed the tiles of the boats that can be rent by the players during the game. I have neatly arranged them in stacks. Each stack of tiles is made up of boats of the same price. Right next to the boat tiles, I have placed the bags containing the fish. These bags come in four different colors, and I want you to notice that the colors of the bags match the colors of the boys that are represented on the board. Then I have placed a black cube here and another black cube over there. This first cube is going to remind us about what round we are currently playing. Every time we complete a round, this black cube is going to move on to the next round. When this cube reaches round 15, the game is over. The second cube has been placed on the Beaufort scale. That black cube over there is going to tell us about the strength of the wind and the weather conditions out in the Atlantic Ocean. Right close to the board, we are going to place this small deck of cards here. These cards are called weather cards. We are going to reveal the card at the top every time we play a new round. And the card at the top is going to tell us how the weather changes in the next round that we are about to play. I have set up the game here for four players. Every player gets a different color and every player gets the same set of components, namely two mini player boards, one a set of four captain pawns numbered from one to four, four fuel tokens, four bait tokens, and one wooden token matching the uh, player's color that's going to be placed on the score track. There's a second token that is placed over there. The order of uh, those tokens is going to change over the course of the game. The order that we are currently looking at tells us that the uh, first player is going to be the yellow player, the second player the white player, and so on and so forth. Right at the top there is a helm which breaks down the five faces in every round of the game. Let's take a closer look at the five ports that are placed on the left side of the board. The first port is the port of Cluster in Massachusetts. Then we've got the port of Portsmouth in New Hampshire, the port of Portland in Maine, 
Then the last two ports are Canadian. We've got the port of Halifax and the port of St. John's. You can hire a captain or rent a boat in any one of these five ports, but based on which port you choose, you're going to have to uh, pay a different price. For example, hiring a captain in Gloucester is going to cost you four points, but doing that in the ports of Halifax or St. John's up north in Canada is going to cost you nine points. That's a lot more expensive. Once you have chosen the uh, port that is right for you and you have um, hired a captain or uh, more captains based on the number of boats that you have rent at that port, then you're ready to set sail and you're going to move those uh, boats from the port out to the ocean. You're going to move your boats along these dotted lines and in your movement on an anchor. You can move across multiple anchors but that is almost always going to cost you fuel, which is yet another thing that you grab from the port. So before you leave the port, also make sure that you have properly outfitted your boat with a good supply of fuel uh, that you can use during your journey. And having fuel on the boat uh, can really come in handy during the game as it can take you uh, farther away uh, on, across the board uh, in a shorter time. You really want to uh, get to the other side of the board because there is where you can catch the uh, the good swordfish, the better quality fish. If you stop here at these anchors, you see them here, the anchors that are closest to the shore, these anchors are going to uh, give you a very, very small swordfish that is not really valuable. And these anchors are surrounded only by orange boys. Orange boys, you don't want to stop there. You want to keep moving and reach the other side of the board. And you see here, you've got boys of different colors, uh, green boys, uh, blue boys, even red boys. If you stop to fish here on any of these boys, you're going to get better quality swordfish than you would by fishing or from, uh, a red, uh, from an orange boy. And you see the red boys um, over there, they are situated in this remote region of the board called the uh, Flemish Cup. If you get there and you stop on one of these uh, boys here uh, to cast the line and try to catch some swordfish, you're going to uh, get almost always the uh, triple marker, which is the best quality of swordfish that you can uh, get uh, fishing anywhere in the world. The triple marker is a big fat swordfish that's going to fetch you a big, big price when you sell it back to the port. So you want to get there. And the first time you go there, you're also going to be awarded uh, one of these tokens, one of these red tokens, um, which is going to uh, be uh, assigned to the um, captain. It's going to be um, clipped to the captain's shirt as a um, badge of honor. And it's going to be worth four points at the end of the game. But you can claim uh, one of those tokens uh, as long as those tokens are still there. When they run out, if you are too late, you can get them. But you see, in order to get to enter this area, this fishing area here, you have to brave the storm. You see the uh, thunderstorms here with the uh, lightnings. They indicate that here you have to face the storm. If you want to get into the Flemish Cup, you have to make sure that your uh, boat is strong enough to withstand the strength of the storm. And you're going to... Um, understand how strong this, the, the storm is by looking at the black cube over there on the Beaufort scale. This cube is going to come uh, up and down on this scale and it's going to tell you the weather here in this region of the board. And it's going to tell you if the storm is too strong for your boat. If it is too strong for your boat, then just steer clear of a Flemish cup. Otherwise, you're going to risk uh, losing your captain, your catch, and sinking the boat into the abyss of the ocean. So you get points in this game by claiming um, one of these tokens here, or more tokens, and uh, most commonly by selling your catch. You sell your catch back to the port, by filling up the rectangles that you see uh, beneath the um, port's names. You fill them up with your fish. At the end of the selling phase, that fish, the fish that you place there is going to be removed and you're going to be awarded uh, points based on the quality of the swordfish that you sold at the port. Then you're going to use a um, wooden token that you're going to place here on the score track that goes all around 
the board, you see, and you're going to place um, a wooden uh, token on that score track to keep track of your score. The points that you score, you can use them and invest them in your activity to improve your business. For example, if you want to hire another captain or rent more boats, then you're going to use the same points that you were able to uh, acquire uh, by selling the fish. At the end of the game, if you've got more points than your opponent, you are the winner of a game. The first time I laid my eyes on this game, I remember that I was immediately captivated by uh, the very cool art that you see on the uh, game box. It's a very intense scene, the fight between uh, the fish, the swordfish and the sailor. If you know anything about this practice, you know that it's a very grueling activity, that it takes hours, it takes uh, muscles, it takes patience. Uh, it's a very intense uh, type of fishing, a very intense activity, and uh, if you uh, add to that also be uh, the rough waters, the storm, I thought the game was going to be epic. Then I play the game, and actually the gameplay is a very relaxed, very laid back. The game is very simple, very easy. It, this is not a complex game at all. You can teach this game to anyone, you can play this game with uh, players uh, of all ages, both um, casual players and experienced players alike. Uh, and it's a very simple, simple game. In the game overview, I did not even talk about the uh, fishing phase because it, that is as simple as dropping your hand into the back and then picking up fish tiles and then adding them to your uh, boat. Uh, it, it's as simple as that and it's not uh, consistent with what really happens uh, when you are fishing uh, for very big and fat swordfish out there in the ocean, especially if you're doing that uh, in very inclement weather conditions. This game is never going to take you by surprise, it's a very repetitive game and actually gets to quite tedious after you have played this game uh, a few times. Um, so I have to say that I was a bit disappointed when I played this game um, because I, uh, I hope that I will get into this kind of game, that I'll get the chance to experience this type of intensity and ex instead the game is all about managing your resources. Uh, going about your business in a shrewd way, uh, figuring out how to invest your points, uh, really trying to get the most out of your bucks. And on top of that, the main mechanic of this game is the pick up and is pick up and deliver. Uh, that is a very simple and straightforward uh, mechanic. Uh, games that have this mechanic, uh, they tend to be very simple, very easy, and this game is no exception. I've also reviewed another game in my collection called Lords of Exceeded. That game is also heavily based on this uh, very simple mechanic, pick up and deliver. In that game you are playing as a warrior and you are uh, roaming the kingdom of Exceeded to pick up soldiers and deliver them to cities where they're needed to defeat the monsters. Here in this game instead you are picking up fish, carrying it to the port, then selling it back to the uh, fish market to uh, make money out of it. I've got to say that the pickup and deliver mechanic makes much more sense here and really helps bring out the theme in a much more consistent way. And I uh, had a, a better time playing this game uh, than I did playing the other game, Lords of City. These two games are very similar. They're both heavily based on this um, play mechanic, pickup and deliver. And as I said in the introduction, I uh, tend to uh, think of them as two brothers, really. And if I were to compare them, I would say that this is the big brother and Lords of City is the little brother, because this game plays better. So I prefer this game to the other one, to Lords of City. I've also reviewed another game from the same author. Uh, he's an Italian guy, uh, he works for Ganos Games, and in 2011 he uh, put out a game based on the Japanese anime Lupin the Ford. Um, I played that game, and I have to say that, uh, again, uh, the, I prefer this game to the other one. I think here um, he did a, a much better job with this game. Um, so this game is my pick over the other two. These were my final thoughts for this uh, game for Swordfish. I hope you enjoyed this review. Hope to see you again in my uh, next review. Until then, from Italy, bye. Ciao and happy fishing.